Hi, I'm Dr. Marty Ross. In this video, I describe how to treat intestinal yeast overgrowth when it occurs in chronic Lyme disease treatment. I talk about how long it takes. I describe both herbal and prescription options. And I even describe a diet that you might wanna be on if you have this problem. Treat Lyme is supported by purchases you make through Marty Ross MD supplements. So in Lyme disease, if you get too many yeast growing in your intestines, it can make your whole condition a lot worse. And that's because both Lyme causes the immune system to make too many cytokines and yeast causes the immune system to make too many cytokines and it's too many cytokines that give you most of your Lyme disease symptoms. In this video, I, this is about how you treat yeast. Um, I do have other information um, on YouTube and also on my uh, information site about how you diagnose yeast. So look for those videos and articles. So when you have too many yeast, one of the things you want to do is make sure you're putting a lot of good probiotics into your intestines, okay? Um, and so if you've been on a product, then I suggest doubling it. If you have been on a product that is based on human microflora, so that would be a product that has bifidobacterium or uh, lactobacillus in it, you may also want to add a second product, which would be something that's like a spore-forming probiotic or a soil-based probiotic, okay? All right, so then in terms of things that you can use to get rid of yeast, I find it's best to use two agents. And while you're doing this, you actually can still stay on your Lyme disease herbal or prescription antibiotics. So the two things that I'd like to use generally would be to have a person start on something called Nystatin. It's a 500,000 international unit pill. You do two pills twice a day. Um, it stays in the intestinal tract. It doesn't get systemically absorbed. And then I usually like to have people combine that with something called Diflucan, also known as fluconazole. And that's a 200 milligram pill and that's one pill one time a day. Another option, if you don't want to do the, uh, the Diflucan, would be to use a Nystatin coupled with an herbal um, antifungal agent. And uh, herbs that work to treat um, yeast, uh, there's two products I generally recommend. One is a product called Phytostan that has herbs in it that support the killing of yeast. Uh, Phytostan is made by Integrative Therapeutics. It has in it caprylic acid, powder co, uh, some rosemary oil, um, and some grapefruit seed extract. Another option would be to take a product made by Karuna called Capri Plus. And that Capri Plus has in it um, some caprylic acid, uh, some rosemary oil, and garlic. Either one of those, you want to do two pills twice a day, and you would combine that with an Istatin. 500,000 international units, two pills, two times a day, all right? Now, generally, to get rid of yeast, it's gonna take about a month, okay? And remember I said, you don't necessarily have to stop your prescription antibiotic either. All right, now, at the end of a month, you need to see, is yeast still there? And so the way that you do that is you look to see, do you have symptoms still suggesting too many yeast? What, generally though, this treatment I just outlined will work about 80 to 90 percent of the time to get rid of yeast and you should start having good improvements by about two to three months into it. Now, let's say at the end of two to three months you still have a number of symptoms suggesting yeast, then you might need to consider using a different agent and that would be to continue on, say, the Nystatin, but you might want to use an alternative to the Diflucan, which would be uh, include other members of the family. One is a drug called itraconazole. It's a 100 milligram pill. That'd be two pills one time a day. Another option would be to use um, a drug called Lamisil, also known as terbinafine, which is in a totally different family. And that's 250 milligrams um, one time a day. And you would treat for another month. Now, Let's say that you've gone through those and you're still not getting rid of yeast or you developed a yeast resistance problem. My go-to drug, if that happens, is to use a medication called amphotericin B. Now amphotericin B, um, if you read about it, it looks like just a horrible drug. And that's because uh, it's manufactured to be given in an IV form to people that have uh, yeast and fungus living in their blood. Um, and, but in an oral form, it's not absorbed into the bloodstream at all. It stays in the intestines just where we need it to be to kill intestinal yeast. So it's great with no systemic side effects, no problems with uh, hurting your liver if you take it in an oral form because barely any of it gets absorbed. 
Now, this is a drug that works 95% of the time based on my experience. And the way to take it is as a 200 milligram pill three times a day, but it has to be made by a compounding pharmacist. This is a pharmacist that takes ingredients and mixes the pills themselves, okay? Now, compared to doing a diflucan or an itraconazole or even a terbinafine, the amphotericin B is going to take about um, two months to work, okay? So I kind of reserve it more for when everything else isn't working or I have a person that has repeated problems uh, with um, having resistance to the common prescription antibiotics, all right? One last thing about treating intestinal yeast overgrowth. It's critical to be on a diet that has low amounts of sugar in it, all right? Because sugar can feed the yeast. My favorite type of diet is a paleo type diet. And um, on my website, uh, treatlime.net, I have a whole article that describes a type of paleo diet I'd like to use. You can find a link to that diet um, in the written version of this article. And also, if you're watching the video version, uh, this video, uh, I'll include it in the description for this video on YouTube.